Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to uh, video number four in this series. This is the number 22 ink flight, uh, the November 2018. And today we're going to do a brown ink. It's called uh, Three Oysters is the company and then it's called Go Gung. And it's a very complex ink as I think we're going to see. So let's start right in with the bath test and then I'll show you what I've uh, been seeing about this ink. It's it's quite interesting actually. But this is the fourth one in the seven series of this uh, ink flight. So let's let that do its thing. And then from yes or from the last video it was uh, three oysters mustard and this is how it came out. You could still read it. That's been the case with every one um, so far out of this company, out of this series of seven. So there we go. Let's get right into the Rhodia Gold Book. This is where I always start out, kind of. And I get to uh, have my little platform here. And here's the ink right here. It's kind of a, um, I don't want to say dusty, but in a way it is. It's It's kind of a muted brown, but I did find one ink in my collection that looked like it and then I found several to look you know to look at with it to to compare so here it is right here I've got it both in the 1.1 millimeters uh, Goulet nib in the serendipity and also in a fine Yowo nib in the Heinz um, custom pen that I have so and here it is on the Tamoy River paper and it's uh you know, it's very saturated, so it showed up pretty good, I thought, in the fine nib. Um, it is available at Goulet Pens for $18 for the 38 mil. And it said it was part of a I Color You collection from this company, where it's, you know, they the colors represent a part of the country. And, and it, and it um, let me read it, because I've, I've got a little printout, and it will help me a little bit more. It said the Three Oysters I Color You collection represents the official colors of Seoul City, South Korea, modified from the I Seoul You brand. And I don't know about that brand, but that's interesting. More research, I think, is needed. And then it says, uh, okay, so this this color, Go Gung, is representative a representative color of Seoul. It looks like the brown pillar in the historical palaces. And then it also adds something. It says that... Um, Ancestors believed purplish brown color protected the house from misfortune and keeps the ghosts away. So I thought that was really interesting. And we're going to see when we look at some of the other samples, um, well, the visual journal and also the panels, we're going to see what they're talking about because definitely some purple comes out, which makes it very, very unique. So um, let's go on into the Cafe Note. Tamoy River Paper in a Nanami Paper Company notebook um, with a 7 millimeter rule. And it, it did really well with both nibs in here. I've got the, the stub on the left and the fine nib on the right. Um, there was no problems at all with uh, flow. It was really nice as far as uh, juicy. It, it flowed really good. And both of those are good nibs. It's just that Sometimes the inks even act dry in uh, in those nice nibs. So I was really happy to see that that they both worked well and everything. And that this, you know, the fine nib is not really what I prefer, but it's it, you could see it, it shows up really well and it and I felt like it flowed really good. So there was that sample. And then I've got it in this little notebook for the little gratitude project um right here. I just like to splash a little color on one side so I can see what the ink looks like. And um, there it is. And it's in the 1.1mm uh, stub for my actual writing today. Now, I don't think I've even posted it on Instagram yet. but <laughs> So you're, you, technically you might be seeing it first. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's go right into the paper samples. I had to turn over. We filled up one side with our stuff. And this is the Tamoy River 52 gram. And, of course, it always, everything loves this paper, it seems like. So that was no trouble at all. And it looks good, I think, in both nibs. I mean, that's quite a dramatic difference, you know, going from a stub to a fine nib. But they looked good. And then here it is on Loistrum 1917. I'll get it up there so you can see it. 
um, I thought it looked great and it definitely flowed right along. You know, it's nice and dark and if an ink isn't going to be my favorite bright color, then the, my secondary thing about ink is it got to be dark enough to see. So I was happy with that, very happy. <clears throat> In fact, I think it's almost gone, the sample. You know, because when you start filling a converter, you know, you, you use it up. I'll probably have to put some back but for, for the next ink. <clears throat> this is Claire Fontaine 90 gram and uh, did good on there. I didn't have that business of it feeling too, too, too dry or anything on this paper. So I think the ink is a little better um, for that uh, part anyway. And then here's Rhodia dot pad 80 gram. Um, and there it is in both nibs. Whoop, bring it in so you could see. Uh, again, no problems whatsoever. And, and uh, I don't, you know, you don't see really shading or anything. Not too much anyway. Every once in a while I see some. But that could be the nibs, you know. They're, they're not flexy. And my, I'm still getting used to that writing with the stub. <clears throat> Here it is on CBS Caliber Paper. And it does lose something in the fine nib on that paper didn't annoy me as much as um, the other lighter ink yesterday did or the purple those two it, it really I didn't like it but this you know you could still read it well and everything so I, w I was glad about that now here's Office Depot college ruled paper and uh, once again it really shows up well on here in both nibs there's no problem um, and that was good. Let's just make sure it didn't bleed through. No, no bleed through at all. And that's a stub nib. So that's good. It's very good. Okay, let's get to the fun part. Actually, on our way, let's see. Oh, look at this. Huh. Okay, you could still kind of read it. And today, instead of a kind of a yellow, I'm seeing sort of a green. But still yellowy, too. Huh. That's interesting. We'll let it continue to do its magic. Uh, but we'll just borrow the little lifter there <laughs> okay here's our panel made special for today here's our ink up on the left hand corner and as you can see and you probably saw when we initially looked at the all seven of the inks on the um ink flight panel it's a complex color uh out comes some purple and and then it's got that dark edging it does move around quite well and yet you can still see underneath there which it is not always the case. Um, let me point you toward Montegrappa Coffee Brown. You can hardly see what was going on underneath there. And same with Robert Oster Hippo Purple. You can hardly see it moved around better. Of course, on your noodlers, no, because they're almost, you know, they're they're pretty strong, um, ink, uh, water resistant. So what I found in my ink sample collection was that the closest that I came to it was uh, Roar and Klinger Sapia. Now I was surprised. I actually thought sapia was going to be quite a bit darker, but it's kind of in the same family. There is a difference. You can kind of see uh, it actually is lighter to my eye, um, at least what I'm seeing here anyway. And then, you know, I put down some that kind of made me think of it for whatever reason. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how this got on here. Noodler's Golden Brown, but I wanted to see, I guess, how it compared, and it's quite a contrast. But uh, definitely I was looking at these other um, sort of brown inks where I know purple comes out. But this is a lot more drastic than Noodler's American uh, Aristocracy. That That's really different. And, and uh, Robert Oster Hippo Purple fell further away from it than I thought it would. And it brought out a lot more pink and purple. So, you know, in some ways there's more in common between um, the Gogang and Montegrappa Coffee Brown. I, I mean, as far as composition, anyway. that It just really amazes me when you get them on here like this. And then, I love this ink, uh, uh, Krishna Dark Chocolate. That's a really interesting, uh, kind of new to me, a pen friend had sent um, a sample. Okay, I'm looking through the camera too and oh dear. Yeah it, it, The camera's brightening this ink up and almost making it look green or something and that's not let's see if we can get it to Huh, it just it, it looks more brownish chocolate brown to me and I don't I don't know how to get that to ha huh, That's too bad, but it's funny. This is looking very very much like it looks there's hardly any difference and same with the sapia and the and the pelican 
quartz, a uh, smoky quartz. So hopefully this is interesting or, you know, maybe you're familiar with one of these, even if it's Noodler's Golden Brown, so you can kind of see how they look uh, together. But let's see how it did on the, um, on the visual journal. <clears throat> now, it's subtle, but it was really interesting to me. And I, I thought this was cool. Out came a whole lot of purple on the edges. And, and uh, yellow, quite a bit of yellow here and there and around. But, uh, yeah, it, it was really, really interesting. And I kind of, that looks like a, like almost like a lightning strike in, in a forest with a bunch of uh, dark, dreary trees or something. I don't know. It, it was really fun to do this one. Um, I liked it. And I like, I, at first it looked a little bit dull. And then when it dried, more color started to show, more purple around all those edges. And so that was really fun. <laughs> Not bad. And, you know, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to this ink either, but I like writing with it. It, write, it writes really well. It's not my choice color, not my first choice color, but it's quite interesting, really. Um, you know, it does different things with water than it does in the nib, but still. Okay, so let's look at what's for next. Next is going to be one I think a lot of us were in anticipating, red wine. Um, that is a burgundy-ish. Let's see what Ink Journal had to say about it in there. Um, I, I love, I love to read that little ticket it, that they send with your box. Um, okay. It says, red wine. This deep burgundy red color has a mellow shading quality and goes down smooth. All right. I like when they go down smooth. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone on that. Um, so that's next. So we just have three. We have, next is red wine, then we have min cobalt, which is a very, looks like a complex blue. And then um, the the jade, the green one. And we're all kind of getting really excited with green lately. Not, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people, including myself. So we really do, we kind of saved, I don't know, maybe we've saved the best for last. It looks like we have, and that wasn't intentional. They just went on there pretty sporadically. <laughs> so I guess that's all for today. Um, uh, it's been a busy time, but fun to take a break and sit down and make the panel and, and kind of compare these inks. It was really a lot of fun. Um, I haven't given this Roar and Klinger Sapia as much time as I would like to. That's one that I'd like to study and, and visit individually soon. I actually, I have had it in a, my only vintage pen. It's a little pocket pen that was gifted to me. I've had it in that t two or three times, but that's the only pen I've tried it in. And uh, it, it really was interesting. It laid down a lot of ink, and um, I'd like to see this in, in a broad nib, too. So, anyway, um, <laughs> thank you very, very much for being here and kind of, you know, sticking with me as we kind of continue to visit these inks. It's a lot of fun to really see them up close and... and uh, look at other inks too beside them so i mean i enjoy it so and i've heard enough feedback to know that you all do too so i'll see you next time bye for now